Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today I'd like to have a talk with you please, which is a two-way conversation. I'd like to talk to you about my concerns and then I'd like you, you guys to give me your feedback please and you can um, you know, message me back in the comments section or you can come into Discord and talk to me or what other, uh, Facebook or whatever. What I want to look at tackling today is to research the problems that some of you guys are having in DCS and look at ways that we can maybe go about fixing it. But I need to specify what we're talking about today. We're not talking about advanced stuff. We're not talking about bugs in open beta and frame rate losses and stuff like that. That's not what today is about. Today is about the absolute essentials, uh, the very, very beginning. So in DCS, now I don't, as you know, I don't work for DCS. We're not contracted, but we do work with DCS with Eagle Dynamics because we're a good source of feedback for them. And so we're good at collecting data and things like that. One thing that we know is that the downloads, the people download DCS a lot. We're talking, I don't know, I, don't, I can't remember the figures now, but millions every year, I think, of DCS is downloaded. And yet only a very small minority actually stick around and get into the game properly and buy modules and join the community and stuff and not just a tiny fraction of a percent. And if you compare that to something like War Thunder, a, 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 a game which is much easier to get into, then obviously the percentage is very low. The question is, how do we increase that percentage? And the reason I've come about to making this video, by the way, this will probably take a while for me to rant on, so I'd suggest if you want to stick around and get a coffee or a tea or whatever, and we'll chat. Yeah, so I've started doing private lessons. Uh, it was very unpopular, but they've been good. Every single private lesson has been excellent. Everyone's been happy. Everyone's rebooking, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to show off. But what I'm saying is that by doing the private lessons, I've got to know a lot of people's real problems. When I started doing these lessons, I thought it would all be how teaching com real complex stuff, the F-14B Rio radar, the uh, FA-18 situational awareness system. is really complex systems, carrier landings and stuff like that. all really complicated. And we are doing that stuff. But also... We're doing a lot of stuff just teaching just people literally the basics. Once you've started up DCS, you know, how do you go and fly? How do you go and fly something that you want to fly? How do you set your controls up? All these things, half the people out there that I'm teaching have their controls set up completely wrong. And there was never any hope of them ever being able to fly their F-18 properly. And they they got on their really expensive computer and their lovely brand new VR headset and it looks lovely, and, but they can't do anything because they don't understand the basics of situational awareness of, by which I mean at the fundamental DCS level of where they are in the world, how you press the F10 button, how you tell where things are on that F10 map and so on, where the different views are. These are not things that bone extra bonuses. These are things you skills you you need a set of skills to be able to run DCS. Uh, so a lot of these people are struggling, me included. When I got into DCS, I'm very stubborn. I refuse to give up on anything. Uh, as you probably noticed, I've had half the DCS community desperately trying to do everything they can to stop me making videos, but I keep going. And the more resistance I have, the more I want to do it. So the, what I'm saying is that when I started DTS, I really struggled. And this is back even in the days when it was even less user-friendly than it is now. But I stuck with it, and we got there, and I mastered it. But most people, 99 point something percent, don't stick with it, they give up, because it's hard to use. And the people at Eagle Dynamics, WAGs, all the guys, as much as we love them, don't understand the problem. They are not people people. Good at making stuff, good at doing technical manuals, good at doing this stuff. Great guys as well. I'm not saying they're unfriendly or anything like that. But they don't understand the human interaction enough of the people that are struggling with DCS. And that's what we're going to look at today. So a lot of those lessons I've been charging dollars an hour not to do really complex stuff, but just to get a guy in a plane, get his controls sort of set up and understand where he is in the world and, and how he gets in the cockpit and, and stuff like that. Just that, getting to that level, for some people just cannot figure it out. And I don't want to charge people for that. I want everyone to be able to do that, obviously, because I want millions of people to come in. So we've got to sort that problem out. If I'm waffling, I apologise, but that's just how it's going to be today. So let's talk about the kind of people that are struggling. They are the average Joe. The people that are 
kind of done well in DCS, by which I mean mastered DCS, are not the average Joe. They are they're special people that have stuck with it, learned all of its odd functions and idiosyncrasies, and and the normal normal people have stuck with War Thunder or something like that. I'm just using that as an example, right? A thing that's easier to get into, easier to navigate, easier to to work out how to do it. Now, what I'm not saying, and this is quite an important point. I don't want to dumb DCS down. We love DCS because it is how it is. It's incredibly complicated, incredibly idiosyncratic, it's awkward, fiddly, and horrendously over-realistic. And that's great. That's what people like us want. And to be honest, lots of people want to follow us. Lots of people see my and other people's videos and want to get into that. But those people are also struggling. The normal people, should we say, are struggling. Now, one solution by Eagle Dynamics is to bring out a whole new game What's it called, RC? The new game? I don't remember the name of it. It's no, it's it's no, like a, it's no secret backs or tax or something. Uh, combat. So, it's, something modern combat, something like that. Their solution is to develop a whole new game. Okay, this isn't secret. You know, I think Wags has said, talked about it. And that is for the normal people, right? Uh, and it's much, it's simplified. It's not DCS anymore. It's not clickable cockpit. It's, it's like FC3. And don't get me wrong, FC3 has a place in DCS. It has to be kept in here because it's a nice stepping stone. But we at GR don't think that the max thing is the solution because it's no longer DCS. People want to come into DCS. They see our videos. They see us clicking all those lovely switches that someone sat and modeled and all the sound effects that come with it and all the horrendously complicated stuff. And they say, I want to do that. I want to fly a real plane as close as I can get to it. Therefore, I want to do DCS. We personally, and hey, I might be wrong. I'm often wrong, as you know. We personally don't think the backs or the backs thing of the oversimplified game we don't think that's the way forward. We think that what we need to help the normal people that are struggling to get into DCS, my idea is an extra user layer, okay? Keep DCS as it is, it's fine. Ignoring the bugs and stuff like that, I know all about that, but it's fine. A, a little user layer to hold people's hands, the normal people's hands that are struggling to get into DCS. That's my idea, okay? So what we want to do is work with everyone that's listening and just think of ideas, even if we have to do it ourselves, even if you don't want to do it, you know, just, 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 just think of a way of doing this. This is the first point of contact with everyone. And the first point of contact should be discovering really what the problem is. OK, what are people are struggling with? I'm going to get lots of people from Hoggett and whatnot coming on and give me their opinion. That's great and fine. But it's not really your, your opinion that I'm after. It's the people, the normal people that are struggling to get in DCS, have given up DCS. I get messages every day on Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. Say, hey, Cap, look, I really want to come and do what you're doing and fly with you, blah, blah, blah. It's too complicated. It's too complicated. I haven't got the time. I'm just going to sit and watch your videos instead. Well, I want them to get into DCS. We want them to get into DCS. Um, I want their point of view. What are they struggling with? Where did they struggle? Uh, was it at this stage? Was it at that stage? Was it at, uh, you know, that stage or at that stage? Where is it that they're getting stuck and can't get any further? What are these major problems they're struggling with? And there are major problems, obviously. So that's the purpose of today, to talk with you, to interact with you, and to get your feedback on where we're struggling. My thinking is that the struggling is between where we are looking now. That is the main screen. So to install DCS, everyone can do that. It's easy. Start it up, everyone can do that. Everyone can click on that button. Um, and I should say, by the way, mainly, um, I don't want to be prejudiced, but mainly this is the elder people that are struggling with this, okay? Generation X, my generation, were brought up on computers, the first generation of kind of computers. So we know computers, okay? Generation Z knows computers, okay? Millennials knows computers, okay? They're okay, generally speaking, not all, but generally. More or less, it tends to be baby boomer generations that are struggling with it. And it's because they weren't built up, trade up with the computers. And so this system of menus and stuff is just not that easy for them. That's not totally true, but that is 90% true from what I've been seeing in my lessons, okay? So that's something we more or less accept. So I think people are struggling from here. Main menu, they load it up, bosh, main menu. Okay, what do I do? What do I do? I know what I want to do. What I want to do is, in my brand new Hornet I've just bought, I want to um, take off from a carrier and I want to go and shoot five MIGs down. And those MIGs are going to, I want them to be red or whatever. You know, I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to do it. So somewhere between here, the main menu, and being in that cockpit with everything set up, all your controls set up, ready, and ready to taxi the plane. 
between here and there I think is a problem okay now when you're ready to taxi your plane when you're actually driving the plane and you're ready to hook up to the catapult and launch and fire missiles and stuff I think that part is actually relatively well covered me there's about 20 people in DCS community making decent half decent tutorial videos now everyone wants to do it and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that I think that's well covered. How do you go and fire your missiles? It's well covered. We must have 20 videos out there. How do you hook up to a carrier? 20 videos out there. And you can watch them and you can see them do it and you can emulate it. But what's not covered and is almost not coverable, I've, I, I don't think, is between the main screen here and getting plonked into your cockpit with everything set up, control set up, your track IR set up. I can't think what else you need, but you know, your sound set up, your graphics set up, all that stuff. I think it's where is what's turning people away. And maybe the absolute basics of, you know, getting onto a runway and, you know, once you're in the air, you're probably going to be okay. Getting onto a runway, maybe a bit of takeoff. So my idea, keep DCS as it is because it's fine, but add an extra layer on, okay? Let's call it virtual cap. Um, I mean, it's not, I don't mean that seriously, but just as an idea, okay? So you come in to DCS, right? You load up and you got to, the first time you load up, hey, are you a noob? Or are you a not or are you a nerd, right? If you're a nerd like me and you don't need help, click I'm a nerd. If you're a noob and you're gonna struggle, then click you're a noob. And you can come back and answer that question again if you want. Put it on noob mode, should we say? And then if you put it on noob mode, you get a virtual assistant, you get a virtual cap, right? And he is gonna say, he's gonna help you through getting you essentially in the air. So he's gonna talk you through from this main screen here, and he's gonna be a little face up here with maybe a text box or a voice. Uh, and he's going to say, um, okay, okay, dude, whatever your name is, you want to go and take off your Hornet? Well, um, you go click on International, man. Okay. What kind of Hornet thing do you want to do today? Uh, where's your Hornet? Because everyone's got the Hornet as wave pies. And that's one of the reasons I'm, uh, I don't want to go for the Max Bax idea of the modern combat is because the biggest selling plane is the F-18. It's also the most complicated plane, more or less, in DCS. Yeah, so people want this complex buttons and MFDs and stuff, and that's fine. I want to do a, um, I don't know, I never do this shit, free flight, I guess, I don't know. Is that a takeoff? Probably, we'll see. Come in, oh, I'm in the air, <laughs> whatever, yeah? But, you know, okay, well, you're in, so you can't do anything, nothing's set up. So how do you set your controls up? Well, you, uh, virtual assistant says, hey, by the way, if you set your controls up, I've detected that you're not doing it right or whatever, have you set your controls up? If not, press escape, go to adjust controls, he'll say. She will say, whatever. And it will say, yeah, you've got to select that up there. And this is not counterintuitive. Counter this is not intuitive. None of this is intuitive at all. This is a nightmare for people. And this box turns probably millions of people away. And I'm not saying you did anything wrong. This is how it has to be. But it's a complex game. Uh, so, you, hey, buddy, you got to choose your sim there because that's what you're flying, right? Um, hey, buddy, uh, you have uh, want to set your... Have you made sure you've set your rudder up? Well, make sure you go to axis control. I mean, who would know this, right? And I know Wags will say, well, we've done a 300-page manual. No one reads the fucking manual. The normal people don't read the manual. Axis commands, you go here, right? And you go, um, hey, buddy, are you sure you've set up your CH Pro pedals? They should be probably driving your rudder. Make sure you click on this button there. Who knows to do that, right? Which noob knows to do that? Uh, make sure you double-click less mouth button on it and then wiggle the rudder left and right. We there it goes. It's detected the rudder. You sure you've done that right? Yeah. Okay, buddy. Uh, I noticed your pedals are very sensitive. Um, are you sure you don't want them to have a bit of curve? Curve would really help your flying, says Virtual Cap. Uh, axis tune. Uh, he says, do that. You want to have a bit of curvature. Hey, buddy. I noticed that you've got some um, some drift in your pedals. Are you sure you don't want a bit of dead zone in those pedals? Why don't you add dead zone? Pull this up here. A little pointer comes. My little face is there. Pull that up there. Right. Or a little chick, manga chick, or whatever. Yeah, this stuff needs teaching. And this is half the stuff I'm doing in my lessons at the moment, which is ridiculous, right? And that, and then you're going to go through every single little bit. And uh, this is what I think the normal people are struggling with, okay? Uh, and then finally set your controls up. It's going to take hours, but, you know, it's DCS at the end of the day. Suck it up. Nothing you can do about that, okay? And, um, uh, and then Buddy's got his fancy VR. He can look around. I can't even remember you look. There you go. Look around. La, 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 la. Um, I don't understand what's going on. I, 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 people want immersion, but people need situational awareness. Let me say that again. People want immersion, but people need situational awareness if they're going to learn their jet. The first thing I say when people come to my lessons is throw your VR set in the bin. Literally. Uh, go and buy a, a cheap track AR and then come and learn. When you've learned, fine, put your VR back on for your immersion, that's fine. But to learn and get into it, you need to understand what's going on in the world. At the moment, 
you, what, you know, what are you actually doing? So do you know you need to press F10? Are you aware, buddy? Half the people I teach don't even know that there's a map here. How do you survive in DCS without the map, right? On a noob level, obviously, is what I'm on about. Did you aware that you could tell all these things out? Are you aware that you can click on the base valued player? Are you aware that you can get all these things that you wanted to do? No one knows about this shit unless you're uh, one of the hardened few that stick with it. Are you aware that you can click on that guy, that you can see a bad guy over there? You know, bear in mind, just can't, you know, this is noob stuff training. We're not talking about um, probably immersive gaming and yeah, multiplayer servers at this point. This is the beginning, learning your jet. Are you aware that you could drag a line and figure out what bearing and heading he is and then translate that to the cockpit and then do this and do that? And all these things you need. Like I said, no one, yes, Wags well, put it in the manual. Those people aren't going to sit down and read a 300 page manual to just work out the shit. This is the basic stuff. These tools I'm showing you here are the basic tools you need, the people need to be able to stick with DCS, to really understand, okay, now I understand what's going on. Now I understand where that bit of water is. Now I understand the baddies are going to be over here and so on and so forth. And those basic tools I'm showing you are what the people need to know and other stuff. How to get their head around DCS and how to stick with DCS and how to be and therefore, maybe we can grow the percentage from 0.1% to 3% or 4% of people that stick around and get it bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what I want to show. Let's reiterate. I want your feedback to show what you think people are struggling with. Again, we're not talking about anything advanced. We're not talking about bugs. This is not that video. This is purely for noob retention, i.e. the person that clicks on this button for the first time so that he doesn't immediately give up and go to War Thunder. That's it. And my second idea is my, my idea of having a virtual assistant noob mode that's going to teach you these things here uh, and that's it and i don't want to make any more tutorial videos on this type of stuff i've already got thousands well i've got what 900 tutorial videos now including stuff like this that we've been talking about i don't want to make any more because i've got so many because there's so much stuff to cover in dcs that people were struggling to find them so it just dilutes it it's pointless it's got they've got to be told in here in the cockpit by a human and it's got to be humanized as well it can't be some gutless soulless tech gray tech stuff here that's not good enough that's great for wags that's great for the programmers well, it's great for me but the people need a human link a face a voice something like that okay to make this work at that level and so i would like to hear your problems on my idea how you can adapt it where you think i've gone wrong why you think i've gone wrong why you think my idea of perception of people was wrong and so on and so forth like i said everything i've said today is coming from what you guys have been giving me through the private lessons that's what i can think to say at the moment is there any and then and then we'll get this together we'll collate all the information we'll send it off to ed for a channel and maybe we'll get something done about it. Anything you want to add to that? Any wisdom you want to add to that, RC? Uh, well, yeah, just to be clear, and you were talked about adding your your head or your voice to it. It was just examples, not that that actually is Or maybe it's configurable, RC. Maybe uh, there's a bunch of characters you can choose. I mean, I don't want to make it into a cartoon, but right. do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just, it's just, you know what I'm saying? You just need, one. Well, my idea was you get a human touch, a human voice, a human something. Right right? Someone you can get annoyed at, something like that, at this new mode level. Experienced gamers, experienced DCS gamers don't need it, obviously. I'm saying it's purely for the people that need it. I'm going to have a quick look at the, um, while I'm online, at the uh, stream as well, because we stream everything we do, and we get good feedback. Tutorials in-game are not good enough. Great. So we've spoken to a major person at DCS about this, and, and that major person said, we've got tutorial in-game tutorials, that's enough. No, it's not. It does not cover anything of what we've been talking about today, which is almost certainly, I think, what people are struggling with. Maybe sharing profile of Hotas, Warthog, uh, less setup for a noob. Agreed. Maybe ED should be doing that. I share my setup, my X56 setups, for free. Come and get them. Uh, and that's to help people get into DC. I can only do it for an X56. That's all I've got. If you want to buy me another joystick, I'll go and do that as well. But you're not. So maybe ED should be having every joystick and giving you the free maps. If you don't do the tutorials perfectly, they stop. That annoys me. Right, I've done one of Wags' tutorials once, and it stopped. I pressed the space bar or something, it stopped, and it didn't start again. And I thought, you know what? My life is too short for this. I'm gonna go and just figure it out or ask someone. They're absolutely right. I want my human assistant, or I want the human assistant to be infallible. 
I want him to have a bit of intelligence. Viking says, get feedback from the people who are struggling, not us. Exactly right. The people who are struggling, the normies, the non-hardcore gamers, need to come out and tell us what they're struggling with. And then I can create a list to send WD or whatever. Far said, like Microsoft Clip, I got this idea, this virtual assistant idea from the new Windows, right? The new Windows. Now, I'm not a computer guy. I don't really know. But when I was struggling with Windows, um, I had almost had this assistant that, that helped me. Um, it didn't talk, uh, but little boxes came up. It knew when I was struggling with something and a little box would just pop up and say, oh, hi, yeah, by the way, you do this for this. And I was like, oh, good, thanks. You know what? That's what I'm trying to get to, right? But even more, even more assertive and intuitive than that. So my idea is the Windows. I can make a version of it. It took me ages to sort out a trim, not to mention access tune. And actually, that's faulty. So this guy here said two joysticks back because they were faulty because he couldn't work out how to set the access tune. Uh, and the sticks were fine. He's right. Figuring out what an access tune is for a normie, for a non-hardcore DCSer, is like talking black magic. When I, when people pay me to come and teach them this, they're like, "What are you talking about? What is? What does that mean?" And it's exactly right. Uh, I think Var has just summed it up great there. Cap's talking about the barriers ED seem oblivious to for new players. So ED are a bunch of programmers, right? They, they, there was a bunch of Russians in their mom's basement, started programming stuff, and it grew. And it's still kind of, I don't want to get myself in trouble, but it's still a little bit their man mentality. They struggle to reach people, normal people. That's kind of why I'm here. I put myself in the slot between ED, programmers, cap kind of halfway in between, and you, the normie that's struggling to get into DCS. I, I mean, you can't set up coupons, and you probably won't be able to handle the rest of the game. No, I, I disagree. But well, I understand what you're saying there. What I'm saying is that Flying the Hornet is very well covered in mine and other tutorials. It's actually, you read those, watch those tutorials, it's actually quite easy. But getting to that point, I think, is where people are getting stuck. Setting your controls up, blah, 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 blah. I get it. Some people are stupid, and DCS is very complex. But stupid people should be able to play DCS as well. Well, I don't even mean stupid, but I mean less than highly intelligent is what I mean. Because it seems that highly intelligent people to play DCS. So people who are less than highly intelligent should be able to come on as well. And they should be helped on board by Eagle Dynamics, by the virtual helper or whatever. Um, if you don't want a complexity ramp, then DCS isn't for you. Um, yeah, I guess. It's a cop-out though, isn't it? it? It's too complex, don't even try. For me, I'm not the smartest guy in, in the world, let's face it. But I apply myself to something and I finally learn it. Why can't other guys be that? Uh, why can't we help people into DCS? I think we can. The complexity is a feature. Absolutely it is. And I don't want to get rid of the complexity. I want to get rid of the difficulty to get into DCS. The difficulty to get into DCS. I don't want to get rid of any of the complexity at all. I've not advocated for that at all. E just assume that uh, we would get to know ourselves in a plane. Yeah, Edie just assume that we know how to get ourselves into the plane and how to set up bonds. And that's because they're used to the hardcore Hoggett group. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're used to them as their clientele. Well, I want to increase their clientele to everyone. So we can't just assume that everyone can do that. VR, you learn to type touch eventually and you use voice attack via com. Like I said, Personally, while you're training, I advocate non-VR. That's what I teach people, but I'm not saying that's the only way. I think the complexity is good, but you can't understand it from right from the start. If they made it easier to get into DCS, a lot more people would be playing. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are down on the FC3 thing. The FC3 thing is good and important. It helps people to get in. Not everyone can come and get into this Hornet and stick with it. In fact, very few people do. Uh, you can get into an FC3 plane and stick with it, and then master it, and then go onto your Hornet. That's what I did. It's a good stepping stone. GR stone is good to help. Uh, yep, so we've got four. So we're just uh, saying the GR training service here. You can't all use that, obviously, but that's there. And there are other people's training servers. It's fine. My experience in the playground server, willing to help you out. So what the boys are saying is that there are servers out there that will help. Absolutely. The vast, vast majority will not touch multiplayer. Okay. I'm trying to change that. The vast majority will not touch multiplayer. So what you're saying there will not help those people. Okay. Virtual assistant will. When I do my lessons, people come in and I say, well, why haven't... You could get this for free in the training server, you know. Um, why don't you do that? And, oh, multiplayer. I don't know how to do multiplayer. I don't want to do multiplayer. So I don't think we can break that down. I think people don't want to do multiplayer, and that's fine. We need to help those people out. 
I'm fairly new. I've got 1,000 hours. I can honestly say the first tutorial I did was confusing and I gave up and, and deleted it. So this guy deleted it. And I get a massive amount of people that's saying, again, not trying to gloat, but say, Cap, you've got me back into DS, DCS. I gave up because it was too hard and you got me back into it. I get that every day and that's great. But that's not enough. Especially in the menus, setting up everything is confusing for people. It is. Like you said, tutorials should expand to the menus as well and be in interactive and be dynamic. Wagner's tutorials are not dynamic enough, not clever enough. Not encompassing of the people's faults enough. And the guys go on and on and on and on and on. And I think we can probably leave it there. Okay, I think we'll leave it there because we're going on. Uh, let me know what you think.